The coming battery day is going to be much bigger than we anticipated earlier. There is something that's even greater than just new battery technologies and I think it's going to blow your mind. There is this big picture that Tesla is painting for all of us to see but it might not be very clear at first but I'm gonna break this whole thing down so you can see the big picture so stick around to find out more. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of EV Source. My name is Harry and I'm your host for today's dose of EVs and technology. So Tesla's battery day got pushed back further once again and to some of you it didn't come as a surprise while others were quite disappointed by this decision. These continued postponements may have more reasons behind them than what Tesla is letting us know. Tesla is known to have always something to show and in this case I think it may be to demonstrate a working battery cell factory line which may have gotten delayed due to the pandemic as some parts needed for the battery line might not have arrived yet. Another product that I believe Tesla would possibly demonstrate is a working version of one million mile battery on a Model S for instance. But there's another big piece to all of this that hasn't been much talked about. And that's what I want to talk about in this video so get comfortable because there's a lot of information to go through in this one. So what I'm talking about here is Tesla's auto beater. You may have already heard of it by now but you may have not connected all the dots yet to see the big picture that Tesla is painting here. They haven't publicized too much about it which is why I think this is something that they will definitely be sharing on the battery day to explain how this will benefit Tesla vehicle and Powerwall owners. So let's break this down and connect those dots. First, we need to understand what AutoBeater really is and why it's so important. AutoBeater is a software that is aimed at utility companies and not us, the consumers. AutoBeater provides independent power producers, utilities, and capital partners the ability to autonomously monetize battery assets and trade in real time. So what does this mean and how does it affect you? I'll give you two examples. One, let's say you have solar panels on your rooftop and you're storing free energy from from the sun into Tesla power walls. The software can sell a portion of that stored energy to where it's needed during peak hours and earn you money while you do, well, nothing. Most of the energy collected from the solar goes to waste because once the batteries are full and you're not really using the energy because you're not home, the batteries will just sit there with max capacity while the excess solar energy will go to waste. The same goes for your Tesla if you have one, which brings me to the second example. You see, Tesla cars are like a small powerhouse on wheels. A Tesla Model 3, for instance, has a 75 kilowatt hour battery, which is over five times the energy capacity than in a power wall. And most of us don't really need all 75 kilowatt hours on a daily basis if you're just driving to work and back. Considering that more than 90% of cars are parked most of the day, which is a lot of energy just sitting there doing nothing. What Tesla is visioning here is to enable vehicle to grid charging or V to G in short and enabling you to sell a portion of that energy back to the grid for profit while leaving enough power in the batteries for you to safely drive home. Then you just plug your car into your V2G charger at home and AutoBeater would find the cheapest energy available to charge your vehicle back to full. This energy would most of the time come from renewable sources which means you will save money. This technology will give the opportunity to manage your energy your way and potentially become energy self-sufficient reducing everyone's reliance on energy companies. Just just get solar panels fitted and then adopt a vehicle to grid technology and your home could become a private mini power station. Providing energy to the grid when it's needed the most will take the load off of power plants allowing them to operate at a nominal rate which could bring down the cost of electricity when demand is high. I know what you're thinking, wouldn't this degrade the batteries a lot faster since you're discharging and charging the battery every day? Well, you're right. It would, but remember the 1 mm battery Tesla has been quietly and successfully working on? This is where that comes in. You see, the current 2170 battery cells in Teslas today would last about 1 to 2000 charging cycles before you will start seeing 90% or less capacity in the battery pack. So the range of your car will go down a lot faster because you're almost emptying the battery each day. How much faster? I'll get into the nitty gritty and all the numbers in just a moment. But with the new batteries, Tesla has recorded over 5,000 charging cycles, even 6,000 charging cycles before the batteries see 
a 10% loss in capacity. That's two to three times more than with the current batteries. So for instance, if your battery is charged to 90% in the morning and by the time you leave from work, it's at 35% due to the energy being used for the grid and then close to 20% by the time you get home, you've used 70% of battery packs capacity in this one day. Now, why did I say 90% charge and not 100%? So when you charge from 20% back to 90%, it's not a full cycle as it's only 70%, but the next day when you repeat this whole process again, you would technically be at 140%, meaning you've done a full cycle and an additional 40% toward the second cycle. Remember, one full cycle is considered to be from 0 to 100%. So if you charge, let's say, from 50% to 100%, that's only a half a cycle. With Tesla's current batteries, to get the best longevity, it's recommended not to charge the batteries to 100% all the time unless you really need to. And it's also recommended never letting it go below 20% either. It's just like with your smartphone, if you let the battery die almost every day, over time, within the first two years or so, you will see a big drop in the battery's capacity, which is why your phone dies much quicker than it did when you first got it. This puts some extra stress to the batteries and over time it will bring down the battery pack's capacity much quicker than it would if you follow recommendations. However, with the new dry electrode batteries Tesla has been working on with Maxwell Technologies, this problem is almost completely dealt with and won't be as big of a problem as it is today and here's why. Because the batteries today use a toxic wet solvent, this needs to be dried and this process takes a lot of time and space. The solvent also makes the battery degrade every time you charge one and reduces the effectiveness and capacity of the battery. So by eliminating this solvent, Maxwell has solved many problems all at once. The batteries take less energy to make, less time to make, less cost to make, are better for the employees and the environment and take less space. And did I mention they're better than the current batteries? they will be more energy dense than the current ones Tesla has. To find out more about the batteries, you can watch this video right here that I've made earlier about what to expect from the battery day. I'll leave a link to the video in the description as well. And this is how I see Tesla converting its existing gigafactories into terafactories. The footprint of the facility may stay the same, but the number of batteries they will be able to pump out will increase dramatically due to these few things that I just mentioned. Within the same space, Tesla could make more batteries because they require less space and less time due to known drying needed. So less space and less time equals more batteries per day. So as an example, let's say your current Tesla was a part of this vehicle to grid network. The battery would get drained a lot quicker than it would normally. Let's say each day your car goes through a one full charging cycle for being part of this network which it wouldn't in normal circumstances, but to make the math easier, let's just assume it does. That means you would complete 365 charging cycles in a year. And let's assume you take care of your battery pack and never charge it above 90% and never let it drop below 20% and you get about 2,000 charging cycles from your battery before you start seeing over 10% degradation of the battery pack. You would get about five and a half years of battery life. Let's round that up to six years. You probably wouldn't want to change the battery pack every six years, would you? And most likely you wouldn't want your car to be a part of the vehicle to grid network, right? Well, with the one million mile battery, this changes the game entirely. If you can get 6,000 charging cycles before degrading the battery pack to about 90% capacity, with this same math, it would take you over 16 years to do so. Jeff Don, who is leading a research lab in Canada, has been working on new battery chemistries and his latest one is pointing toward a battery that isn't as affected by charging up to 100% or letting the battery drain to 0%. Currently, in the existing Tesla vehicles, you're technically just carrying extra weight and energy that you can't really use because of not charging all the way to 100% and not letting it drain to 0% to avoid damaging the batteries and reducing their lifespan. But this new battery chemistry would make it so that all of the battery pack and its capacity is available for you to use without having to worry about battery degradation as much. Now the idea of vehicle to grid starts to sound more appealing, doesn't it? So when you piece this information together, you will start seeing where all this is heading to. But let's keep going because there's a lot more. So at this point, let's take a quick look at how much money you can potentially make by having your car be as part of the vehicle to grid network. 
the cost of electricity varies from state to state, but let's round that up to 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Autobeater would buy one kilowatt hour of battery energy for 10 cents and sell a one kilowatt hour during peak hours for 20 cents. You made 10 cents of profit by doing nothing. Now, let's say you have a Model 3 and you have 75 kilowatt hours stored in the battery pack and you only need 35 kilowatt hours on an average day which means you could let Autobeater sell the other 40 kilowatt hour at peak hours, which could make you $4 in a day. That's $1,460 in a year. And in 16 years, you're looking at $23,360. And of course, Tesla would take their own portion from this. And the numbers may vary depending on where you're from and what time and at which price it's being sold at and the amount of energy you're giving out to the grid. You could potentially have more than one Tesla and multiple power walls at home and sell a lot more energy this way and make a lot more profit than with just a single vehicle. Over time, yes, you probably would be recycling the battery pack and getting a new one, which is a very quick and easy process, just like Tesla demonstrated once. And batteries have come down a lot in price too in the last 10 years. And by the time you would be changing the battery pack, the price would have come down more from today's price. At today's rate of about $154 per kilowatt hour, you would pay about $11,500 for a new battery pack. But once EVs reach price parity with gasoline vehicles, that will happen by 2023 according to Bloomberg's report you would be paying about seven thousand five hundred dollars for a new battery pack and by 2030 it's expected to be around 65 dollars per kilowatt hour so the pack would cost you less than five thousand dollars with the profit you make you could easily afford a new battery pack while making money and helping the environment and stabilizing the grid so what would happen to all the recycled batteries then? Well, it seems Tesla has thought of this step as well. You see, one of Tesla's co-founders and former Tesla CTO JB Straubel started a battery recycling company called Redwood Materials back in 2017 and is located in Nevada. The company has kept a very low profile and been very hush-hush about its existence and operations so far. And I think the purpose of this company will eventually be to take in battery packs from older Tesla vehicles that would be upgrading to the new 1 million mile battery pack. The company would take out the bad battery cells and reuse the ones that are still in good condition to put them in a power pack for big utility storage systems. Because the batteries would only be used for energy storage, it wouldn't really matter much if if the capacity is even 70% because there's no mileage or range to be worried about. They're essentially just taking more space which in most cases wouldn't be a problem as these are usually built in large open areas where they can easily scale up the system when needed. Okay so going back to what I was saying earlier about giving energy back to the grid, in order for you to sell electricity your vehicle needs to be plugged into a vehicle to grid charger. For instance, when you plug in your car at home, you need to have a V to G charger at home. This would allow you to charge your car fast at the lowest rate possible, but you can make it work the other way around, giving energy back to the grid. This two-way system is what is being talked about everywhere around the globe right now, and some countries are heavily investing in vehicle to grid infrastructure. Countries such as the UK that just invested over 20 million pounds into vehicle to grid chargers. This means once the infrastructure is there to support this, people with EVs that are capable of vehicle to grid charging will be able to do this almost anywhere. Currently, there are many different kinds of plug types across the world and this is starting to remind us of all the different types of charging cables we have with cell phones. But just like the type C is slowly becoming a major standard today, aside from Apple's lightning port, I'm sure over time a common standard will get adopted by the world for EVs as well. Imagine having your car parked at your workplace and connected to a vehicle to grid charger or spending a few hours at the shopping mall while having your car plugged into a B2G charger. You'll be making money while you're spending money. You of course would have full control over this to make sure you always have enough mileage left in the battery pack to get you back home. So this could easily be enabled and disabled through an app for instance. It's almost like this new norm that we've come to expect from today's technologies where everything is made easily accessible via your phone. The entire system is managed by Tesla's Autobeater software and it's already in use in South Australia by the Hornsdale battery and a VPP. Oh gosh, another acronym. What is VPP? 
Well, VPP is a virtual power plant that manages the power usage across the grid and supplies power to where it's needed during peak hours by accessing virtual power plants that can be spread across communities and cities to access energy storage systems such as power walls and Tesla vehicles. These could essentially replace peaker plants once there are enough renewables and batteries available for VPPs. As it's written on their website, quote, Autobitter has hundreds of megawatt hours of assets under management that have supplied gigawatt hours of grid services globally. Autobitter operates at every scale, from aggregations of behind the meter residential systems to 100 megawatt utility scale installations. With seamless integration between hardware and software, Autobitter can be trusted to capture revenues immediately after project energization and 24 7 in dynamic environments. The biggest advantage of this system relies on our ability to capture and store energy, unlike the traditional power plants that produce energy but cannot store it for later use. But because the world has been transitioning more toward renewables such as wind and solar, it's already helping the grid in a massive way during the day and bringing down the cost of electricity tremendously. But there has been one piece missing from this entire puzzle, energy storage, and Tesla has solved it. There's so much energy coming from the sun that if we were able to capture all of the sun's energy hitting the entire earth, even for just one second, it could power the entire United States for one year. So even if we are able to capture a small portion of that energy when the sun is up during the day and store that energy for later use, we can solve the energy crisis almost instantly, making electricity cheaper and available to everyone. As we build more solar farms and wind farms and swap from traditional roof tops to solar roofs, we are slowly transitioning to a more sustainable future. The autobitter would tap into every source of stored energy whenever and wherever it is available and make traditional power plants almost obsolete. If every house had a solar roof and every rooftop such as parking lots, skyscrapers, etc. had solar power on their roof and a good battery storage system, this would definitely be the case. The journey to get there might take some time, but I don't see why we couldn't do it. With solar panels becoming cheaper and more efficient and the same with batteries, this seems much more like a possibility today than it was less than 10 years ago. And to drive my point home and connect the remaining dots, let's take a look at how Tesla is approaching to enter the utility market. Tesla has applied for a utility license in the UK and because with what they have created, the long-lasting batteries, the great energy storage systems, vehicle-to-grid charging, and now the software, they wouldn't just be a part of a utility solution, they would actually be a power utility. And because the energy sector could be much bigger and more profitable for Tesla, it would make sense for them to consider leasing out their batteries. Let's take the Model 3 as an example. Today, the Model 3 costs about $39,000. Tesla could lease the battery pack to you and install the V2G charger in your home for free, and you could buy the Model 3 for just $29,000. Yes, you would save a lot of money up front, but the catch is Tesla would most likely require you to have your car plugged into a V2G charger for a number of hours every day, and all the profit would go to Tesla. To some people, this might be totally fine because they're getting a brand new Model 3 for a lot less price than having to buy it with the battery pack. Not everyone cares about making money with the cars, so this solution could be a win-win for both the buyer and Tesla. This way, Tesla could have more cars on the roads and make money from V to G and a VPP and thus accelerating the world toward a more sustainable future. And whenever you need to replace the battery, Tesla would do it for you at no cost, if you lease the battery that is, and then just recycle the old one. Tesla is genius. Okay, let's do a quick recap. Tesla's vehicle to grid will allow cars and power walls to distribute energy back to the grid, allowing you to save and make money while you do nothing. Or you could save money when buying a Tesla vehicle by leasing out the battery. Either way, you as a Tesla customer would win. And the environment would also see positive results as Tesla ramps up its production and more people buy Tesla vehicles. Peaker power plants will begin to shut down and renewables will have tons of new storage roaming the streets. Can you see the big picture now? Tesla's lead in the battery market is becoming so huge 
that they're winning in every sector. Unless someone traces and repeats Tesla's footsteps and catches up to them very fast, Tesla may be a big monopoly very soon. What do you think about the vehicle to grid technologies and would you take part in it? As always, let me know in the comment below. If you like this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe because that's what helps this channel the most. You can also find me on Patreon for exclusive content and insight to EV source production and check with me on Discord on a regular basis. This version of support will help me keep this channel going and focus more on what's important which is providing more and even better content to you the viewers. I hope you have an excellent day ahead of you and remember to keep charging ahead and I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe and take care.